Joining me now is Alexandre Trudeau. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Uh, I think it's, it's fair to say, from what I got of the book, that China is sort of a thing for your family, right? I mean, it started with your father mm -hmm. uh, and has been passed on to you. What is it about China that is so fascinating to you personally? Such an important country, obviously. I did, you know, 15 years making documentaries on geopolitics, so China was often the elephant in the room, you mm -hmm. know, in the Middle East or in Africa, you know, Chinese arrival in the world trade economy, you know, arrival in the geopolitical scene was so important to begin with. But, you know, it's also just an ancient country, the mm -hmm. most stable Asian country, you know. The West is so full of movement, so full of cultural, genetic, linguistic, uh, religious changes mm -hmm. uh, that it's kind of fun to look at a story that's sort of a one continuous thread yeah. that you can, you know, do real archaeology of thought. There. And, and sort of mysterious too. And mysterious. It's yeah. also, you know, we 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 kind of forget how dominant the West has been for five, six centuries, and therefore everywhere has sort of had taken on Western biases and organized. China hasn't. Mm -hmm. You know, China is a place apart. So you once you get into China, you actually look at the West from the outside, which mm. is so important. What is it about um, the memories or what your father told you about his experience with China that, that he passed on to you? Because obviously that's where that fascination started. Yeah, there's right? a good story on that in the preface that I wrote to his book. You know, it, for, for him, China was in 49 when he first went. China was going through its the end of this huge, you know, 30 year long revolution. Mm -hmm. And it was very chaotic, you know, quite in the true sense of the word awesome, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, uh, terrifying and, and fascinating at once. So it became sort of the epitome of his, or the, the crucial moment of his around the world trip at that time. Mm -hmm. And we grew up, or at least me, you know, we all did, but listening to his stories about travels, mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. and he described people with wheelbarrows full of cash in China because inflation had been, was so rampant, yeah. and, you know, and China just sort of stood out as, you know, the ultimate destination of travelers, you know, and then it became so important in this world. It was a, it was a must. There, there was, there's a moment in that, in that first chapter where um, he, he your, your father decides that he wants to show you guys the world sort of, and, mm -hmm. and you, you want to go to China, but then it's in a moment of upheaval mm -hmm. around Tiananmen Square. You beg him to go, you finally get there, you're in Tiananmen Square, and you, you sort of go a little cuckoo, you and your brother, right? You, like you, I don't know if it's in Tiananmen Square when you're going Hi, up the China. mountain, yeah, right? Yeah, T tell me that story. Well, we were, uh, we still are, point? you know, Teenagers? my brother and I, yeah. when we get together, we're just like the young lions we were, you know, one missing, obviously, but, yeah. uh, you know, we're boxing and pushing and, you know, throwing our kids around, so we, we were a bunch of, still are, yeah. you know, and yeah. if you get us in a private setting, uh, energetic, <laughs> And, you know, my, my father mostly encouraged that, but at certain times, you know, he had a sense, oh, this is kind of a sacred place for yes. people, you know. Uh, and here are my boys just bouncing off the walls, behaving. And, in the, you know, and then the added problem to that is we ended up injuring ourselves. Like, yes, uh, yeah. And so we were sort of crippled the next day. And he was like, you guys are ridiculous. Yeah, he had he no said, time Stop for it. behaving like barbarians, you know, the Chinese see us as barbarians often, you're giving him reason to do that. <laughs> Hence the title. Uh, you, you, you reflect a lot on, on Confucius in the book and, and the concept of filial duty, um, respect for one's parents, which mm -hmm. is very different uh, in China than it is in Canada. and mm -hmm. maybe, maybe indigenous communities, it's, it, mm -hmm. it's reflected better, but certainly in, 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 in Western communities, it's, mm -hmm. it's not. What, 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 is that, what is it about that um, understanding of the filial relationship that you have taken and that you understand? Ah, there's so much to say about that. But to begin with, it's the notion that, you know, the, the individual here is, is all powerful, you know, all in trying, you know, for me as well, you know, I'm a you know, barbaric free thinker, you know, uh, and uh, there you really are just a small piece, which is in many ways kind of a more wise way of looking at everyone. The world, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're just tiny, yeah. Yeah. you know, insignificant little blips. Uh, and there, so your, your importance doesn't come from, strictly speaking, yourself. It comes from the bonds you have, the uh, services you provide to much larger structures than yourself. Um, it's ancient. It's, you know, it's being challenged now by a very a newly comfortable Chinese generation, yeah, yeah. you know, by the, by the fact that all these grandparents are all focused on less children, too, yes, so they're yeah. carrying these weight yeah, and there's rebelliousness yeah. there. Yeah. It's a fascinating element of China, the way, and it's something I ultimately I've sort of absorbed and taken on. That you know, what what could be more true? That you know, what what's the only thing really real about us in the long run is what we managed to receive from those who came before, and what we managed to pass on to those who followed. So, how does that inform you and and sort of the way you look at 
what you, you said in, in interviews has become sort of a, a, almost a monarchist sort of view of, you know, you're sort of viewed as Canadian royalty. So yeah, well, I, that, I know that you don't love that, but but that is... <laughs> Canadian it. snap out of it. It's not healthy. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because it's, uh, we should turn to politics for reasons of ideas. Now, there can be an association of ideas through generations, and that's mm -hmm, okay, but, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I love, I talk a lot about Montreal to people. I love the fact, you know, my father used to walk to work in Montreal, yeah. no security, no one except tourists would bother him. Because Montreal, Montreal is a one, respect people's space, and two, they're too cool to like, so what, you know, so, you know, we're all equal here. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess there's kind of a, in, in the true sense of the road of republicanism to me, which I think is important, you know. There's nothing hereditary about honor, you know. You don't get, just because your father was great, there's, you're starting, you start at zero. You know, you don't, you don't get that from the start. But you do get a leg up in life. And you're, you you're, you're yeah. very aware of that throughout you do, this yeah, book, Yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you do, you do. And then terrific privilege to have seen things that, you know, were rare and, mm -hmm. and, and inaccessible to to a lot of people. Your, your, your brother just came back from China. I don't know if you've talked to him since, since mm -hmm. that trip. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the pictures must have brought back all sorts of thoughts. And I know you've been there many times, but it must have been interesting to see him in the same role as your dad in a place that you adore so much and, and have a lot of time for. I'm afraid I didn't see any pictures. You didn't see any pictures. No. <laughs> I'm not, uh, no, I don't really f assiduously follow the news. I knew he was there yeah. and I thought a lot about him there because yeah. he's got some big challenges. Uh, so, what, so what do you think the challenges are right now for, for any Western leader trying to, as he is, um, sort of reestablish a relationship with China and make it a, a, a more consistent relationship? There's a, there's a number one. What, first, we're an expert country. You know, our wealth is based on how much we can sell abroad. So he's a salesman in chief. Uh, right. You know, that's a hard one, you know. Yeah. Uh, Especially when, you know, rightly so, a lot of Canadians are uncomfortable with the Chinese government. So they, it's hard to see what well, we still, I, I think that's a misunderstanding. You know, we deal with so many countries, including our neighbors, with which we have very good reason to disagree with on a lot of things sometimes, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but that doesn't, I don't, at least I'm not one who believes that trade should be politicized like that. With human rights concerns, you mean? Well, I mean, there's, I think the way of going at human rights is saying China has to evolve. We want to be a long-term right. friend to China and be helpful as it evolves, right. you know, uh, and, and we have a lot to learn from them too. Uh, in not just Canada, but the West in general. Sure. They're, they have a history of dealing with demographic issues where uh, that we don't, you mm -hmm. know, that, but we're in a smaller planet, limited resources, uh, you know, the codification of societies is, is kind of becoming necessary and there's a lot there in China to learn from. The other element I think what I was thinking more recently about is that, you know, China, Canada has to, I think in recent times, Canada sort of disappeared as an independent mm -hmm. voice. You know, uh, as a country that makes its own decisions about things. You know, when's, when you think about a, uh, international politics, whether it's any Middle East, when's the last time you think, well, Canada really has a position that's unlike any other? We've kind of fallen into a sort of confused follower nation, mm -hmm. you know, sort of. Uh, Is that possible to have an independent voice still in a Well, world my father like certainly believed it, and I think it's everything to the Canadian advantage, even as a trade nation, that we're not. We, we should be surprising countries with our position, you know, because mm. it's authentically unique and, you know, it's very hard. It was, it was just a constant challenge when we're so closely linked to the United States, mm -hmm. obviously. Mm -hmm. They expect us to toe the line on so many issues, but it's not even good for them that we be so close to them. We have to be independent. Uh, and developing uh, an independently sophisticated relationship with China is, is one of the big features of that. Um, you, you, you were you were raised in the spotlight, um, but you are rarely in it. it. It doesn't seem to be something you enjoy. How, how do you how do you how is it that one one brother turns out to obviously enjoy it, <laughs> it has pictures everywhere, the other brother hasn't even seen the pictures, and and sort of shuns the spotlight? Why why are you not more? Oh, I, I need the spotlight publicly. sometimes. Yeah. So here I am. Here we are. I'm telling people read my book. <laughs> I work hard on it. It's interesting. <laughs> I. I um, I don't know, different personalities. He's an extrovert, I'm an introvert, you know. Um, just different choices, too. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I really love my anonymity, you know, especially as a traveler. That's who I am traveling. Mm -hmm. Just a nobody, yeah. you know, poor, you know, rough, sleeping in, getting into obscure places and seeing unique, singular things, you know. Yeah. 
sometimes when there's too much light, you know, you miss all the detail, all the shadow, you know, all the interesting things that are much harder to get at. Does that, does that worry you for him, that, that, that he will lose that He's having a blast. I'm not worried for him at all, you know. Uh, you know, his goals are very different than mine. Yeah. How, you know? how so? Well, he's, you know, he, for instance, he has to speak for everyone, for the, all the Canadians. I am, I'm only speaking for myself, you know. He has to sublimate his own will and desires, you know, uh, to a much, you know, a larger cause than himself. Mm -hmm. And I'm just driven by my own curiosity, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by my desire to explore, to discover, sometimes, and to share, you know, yeah. through, but my, in my controlled manner, you know, through my words, through my films. You, 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 said, you told the Ottawa Citizen that uh, your family is the bane and joy of your existence. <laughs> That's a little strong, maybe, yeah. <laughs> it's a direct uh, quote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess my family, it's always hard to be known before you're known. The, because people have known me for so long, sure. you know, it's hard. And then you, you have to sort of, you have feel that you're going to have to live up to their expectations or deliver what they want you to be. Sure. Justin's very comfortable with that, very good at it, you know, me much less. Yeah. And so politics now for you? Uh, I don't think I have the personality for it, nor the interests, you no. know. No. No, I, sometimes I wonder if things would go really wrong, maybe I'd feel compelled to serve. But, you know, we have a great country going r relatively well, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. uh, there are much more able people than me than to look after that, ha those happy times. Well, it's an interesting book, and I appreciate you sharing some of your stories. Thank you. Nice to meet you, because I knew you from afar, and now we've just met for the first time. So thank you. Appreciate it. Pleasure.